Hello, Richmond. I'm super bummed I'm not there, but I want to talk to you about something that I've been working on for about seven or eight years now. The problem of transitioning students from high school to university came across my desk one day and I thought, no problem, right? We're just going to use the power of the internet. We're going to get this all sorted out. Um, and it's it's a tough nut to crack, it turns out. You know, my first solution is 2009. I thought, let's solve that with a MOOC. That'll be fine, right? Uh, not so much. Uh, hard to get people attending, hard to get them involved. They didn't really seem to understand the activities we were doing. I tried a Facebook course that was equally challenging. I had the faculties in the university go by like science and like physics, and they do a preparatory course and try to get them ready. But what it comes down to, is an understanding, trying to get an understanding of what it was that they were actually missing. And I talked to a whole bunch of people about this or a bunch of research. And what it came down to is I really had two choices of what I could work on. I could try to have students try to want to be successful. And that's difficult because they all want different things. And I don't really want to throw them in a box and make them want the things that I want. Or I can try to convince them that they can do things. And for the students who come into our university, that's one of the big challenges that we have. And you see this in a lot of different universities is they don't understand that they can grab hold of whatever situation they're in, whatever it is they want to do, and actually go about helping themselves succeed. So I looked at the stuff that we've been doing. I decided none of this is working. What we actually need to do is come up with a different way to crack, that crack this learning problem, like to actually get to this and to make it work, make sense. So I want them to believe they can. I can't tell them that they can. I can't force them uh, to be independent. I can't like, you know, put them in the lockstep, put them into a classroom and try to convince them somehow. So somebody lecture them canness. It's not going to work. So I fell back on the thing I always fall back on is, well, I guess the, the curriculum is going to have to be the community. I'm going to need a, a large group of people here who are going to be telling the story of canness and I need them to be people that those students are going to understand. So we started this mentorship project about two and a half years ago um, where we started training students at first to tell students that they could do stuff. And then we got to the point where we're like, no, you know what we need to do? We need these students telling the stories of themselves. We need mentors who are going to come in as students are transitioning, once they're on site in our new student orientation process, who are going to sit down with those students and are going to help them understand what it means to be successful uh, whatever that success looks like, how they themselves went about doing it, and give them a touchstone, a touch point for them to be able to find somebody who can help them find help. So we started this storytelling process. We're trying to find those stories that really seem to work and amplify those and put them back in the system. Um, and there have been great stories coming out of the process. I got one student who came up to me the other day and said, look, uh, I feel like I have to go to class now because I've been sort of mentoring these first-year students and I feel like I've got to actually represent the things that I was saying. I actually have to live the story that I've been telling. You know, I have another student who took it upon themselves to go out and sort of bring a bunch of first-year students together a month after new student orientation and put them through a, a conversation, just talk about the challenges they had and maybe share some of the different approaches different people had taken to solving them. And those are the outcomes that I have, and this is the research that I'm interested in doing. I want to know how that community of mentors and that community of first year students are sharing their stories and how are they changing from I can't to I can. Where is that being represented? And I'm not interested in counting how many stories there are, and I'm not interested in this sort of social science process where I take a whole bunch of stories and I categorize them into, you know, 20% cans and very can. I'm not interested in it. I want the stories to stay stories. I want them to be the outcome. I want the stories themselves to continue to shape the narrative going forward. I want a way to keep the quality of the stories being told, the authenticity, the uncertainty, the partial commitments, all those things that make a real story real. I want to keep them inside the research. And I want that to be able to guide the next iteration of this process at my university. I want to be able to share it with other people as story so that they can find another way to help that work for whatever it is they're trying to get done. Because I think at some level, when we take these intensely human experiences and we quantify them and we count them, we lose that 
magical quality that allows us to actually affect that complexity, to actually change some of that narrative and maybe bring those kids from can to can. Cheers.